choice here. We just look at the questions that where you need to provide answers. But you can see two different types. One, you see answer, A and S. Another, you see solutions, right? The last three question, solutions for last three. Yeah. Other than last three, you know, then short answers. All right. So short answers, you do not need to provide the details. So you only need to give me the final answers to earn full credit. Okay? All right. Solutions. You need to provide me the details of the solutions. Okay? Oh, the main steps. Yeah. Because details, how, how much details, right? Yeah. So at least you give me the main steps of your solutions. Okay? So you need to let me know your main idea to solve this problem. Okay? Yeah. Main idea to solve this problem. Key steps. Okay? So minor steps may not be important. All right? Yeah. Yeah. So the key steps. Yeah. So solution part, yeah, because based on the students before, many students they didn't provide the details. They only give me the answers. Yeah. So if you only give answers, so here for the solution, I do this. Yeah. So answers, detail. What is that? Yeah. I mean the the pen not quite not quite good. Why is that? Hmm? Yeah. Details. All right. Two out of four points. Another two out of four points. Okay. In the whole question, four points. Answer two of the four points. Details, another two of the four points. To earn, earn full credit, you need to let me know. How do you solve it? Okay? All right. But another part, yeah. Although this part answers no details needed, but I want to say, no. Although no details you need to provide me, but to your benefit, in order to earn partial credit, you can provide me the details, some key steps. Details still key steps, okay? Yeah. Because sometimes your answer could be wrong, but your idea is correct, right? Yeah, think about this. Yeah, just last step, you you know. You calculate your answer wrong, but your formula, your intermediate steps, all correct. You want to, if you want to earn partial credit, give me some main formulas or main steps to earn partial credit. Okay? Yeah. So this, uh, to earn partial credit okay give me some main steps or key formulas okay yeah to your benefit. Yeah. Earn partial credit. Yeah. That's quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I want to say. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, also another thing, yeah, other than this, another thing, uh, because for this assignment, uh, I treat as a relatively hard assignment for you, right? Relatively hard assignment. Yeah. So I give you, give you one day grace period. Okay, yeah. After the deadline, you still you have one day grace period. Okay, without penalty. Yeah. Other than after that, then penalty. Okay, each day four points penalty. Okay, yeah. After, after the grace period, penalty. Four points per day. Okay, yeah. let you know first. Yeah, yeah, not too too much. Yeah, but but you cannot delay too long. Yeah, because if I post the answers, then I won't accept. Okay, yeah. So usually two or three days at the most. Yeah, because we need to prepare for the midterm, right? So I will post the answers. And we will do reviews for midterm. So we do not have much time to wait for you know some people turn in. Yeah. Two or three days. So that probably fine. Okay? Yeah. But be aware, be aware penalty. Okay? A penalty. Yeah. All right, so that's what I like to say about this uh, our first assignment. All right, yeah. Okay, yeah, so let's uh, go back to, yeah, we have, I remember we have one and a half slides left from the previous topic. So we, let us finish that topic first. Then we complete this one, and then the new part of C. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I mean, I may need to, Eat some candy to get some energy. <laughs> yeah, I feel a little hungry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let me this quickly. All right. <coughs> All right. Let me start from the end of last slide, this one, yeah. to the bottom, we are here, yeah, we are here. Mm. All right. Oh, yeah, another one, right? Oh, yeah, here, oh, yeah. So we assume n is power of 2 because that special case would give us the simplest situation to handle the recurrence relation. Simplest. Why simplest? Because we can remove all the flow function from all equations. Yeah. All gone. No flow functions. The simplest. Yeah. 
And I said last time, we use this case as the foundation of our solution. Although the simplest, but it's important. So we start from that simplest case. We build our whole solution on top of the simplest base case. Yeah. So that idea. Okay. All right. So let's start to build this foundation. Yeah. Uh, then to solve this one here, our n equals two to the kth power. Yeah. So k equals log base two of m, and the k must be an integer. Yeah. For this special case, k must be an integer. Yeah. Then. Let us rewrite our recurrence relation. This time, we want a version without floor function. Yeah. All right, so the first one, a of 2 to the k, left-hand side, right-hand side, a of 2 to the k minus 1, plus 1, the first equation. Yeah. All right, then let's write several recurrence Equations, yeah, the first one, second one, and so on. But we can not write too many, so we use da da da. Okay, the last one yeah, is like this. Yeah, all right. Now, the in order to find solution, solution that's we want to write a value of this one, a of two to the kth power that expression yeah but when we do observation we can see left hand side right uh, right hand side we have this term the same term repeated also at the left hand side but in different equation different yeah. if we add them up if we add up all these equations then we have a lot of cancellations a lot of cancellations Okay, and we take cancellations in this pattern, okay, this diagonal, diagonal pattern, all right, yeah, another cancellation, all the way down to the bottom, the last one, then you can see, after the cancellations, how many terms left, left hand side, only one top term, one top. All the remaining canceled. Yeah. Right hand side, one bottom A term, then there are certain number of ones added up. Yeah. The question, how many ones do we need to add up? How many questions? You need to count the number of, sorry, you need to count number of equations. Can you? Count it quickly. How many? K. Yeah. So you say K. Any other possible answer? All agree. This K. K number. Adding up. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much close. Yeah. Yeah. Here you can see clearly. Remember, we learned a counting method called a counting by reference. Here. You can still choose appropriate reference to give you exact counting number. So you can use the superscript one, two, three through k. Yeah. Count superscript. Okay, each equation there is a corresponding superscript. For that equation, yeah. yeah. Different equations, that superscript exponent numbers, they are different. Yeah. All right, so one to one correspondence. Then when you count those exponent numbers, they are consecutive integers. One, two, three, through k, that's k. Yeah. So you will get the, you know, k equations, k ones. So that's K. All right. So at the end, 
you, yeah, because the initial value is one. Initial value is one. So k plus one. So first, this a of two to the k, when n equals power of two, you get this exact answer number, k plus one. But you want to write it in terms of n, right? Yeah, because k is an intermediate variable. Yeah. In the original question, we don't have k. Yeah. So your final expression should not be in terms of k. You have to go back to the original variable n. Yeah. So another step you should write a of n equals 1 plus log base 2 of n. That's the formula. Okay? For this special case, you derive this exact formula. Okay? Yeah. The next question, how to go from the special case to the general case? Yeah. Our goal, we want to find the formula for the general k, not necessary the power of n, uh, two, power of two. Yeah. So we need to go to the next step. Yeah. For the next step, make a guess. So this place, we need to guess the result. If we go to arbitrary positive integer n, this time, our guess has some base, right? We, this special case can be used as the base of our guess. So it's not a baseless guess, right? So we have a base for the guess. Okay? Yeah. Another thing you want to see, because look at this log base 2 function. For a general m, it may not be an integer, right? Yeah. In general, it's not an integer. Okay? In general, it's not an integer. When, only when n is the power of 2, it's an integer. In general, it's not an integer. Yeah. How do you convert a non-integer expression to an integer expression? If you want to go to a general case, we need to convert to an integer function. How to do it? How to make it integer expression? Non-integer. To integer in a, in an easy way. Do not consider there's some comp complex complex way. Okay, simple way. Simple way to make it integer. Raman deep. Rolling. A flooring, a floor, yeah. Floor function or ceiling function, yeah. The easiest way, two cases, one floor function, another ceiling function, right? Yeah, all right. So when we make a guess, there are two cases we can try, okay? Simple. One is we take the floor function, yeah. Oh, sorry, <laughs> already here. Second, yeah, I didn't write. Yeah. Second, we take the ceiling function. Now you need to determine which version is correct. Which version is correct? One is correct, the other is not correct. Can you find a simple way to eliminate one of the two possible ways, simple way. We have a strategy before, right? Remember, we apply. String matching problem, we make a guess, n minus m plus one, how do we determine plus one or not, right? 
try some simple cases, right? Try some simple cases here because we want to see the difference on floor function and the ceiling function. So you have to try some n that is not power of 2. That is not power of 2. Okay? So how about let's try n equals 3. n equals 3, simple. It's not a power of 2. Yeah. When you write binary expression 1, 1, right? 1, 1, the number bits 2. Okay? Yeah. The number bits 2. So a of 3, you can have the answer a of 3 equals 2 easily. But let's plug in to two versions for our guess the formula. Which one would give us 2? Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Log of base 2 of n, floor function of 3, floor function 1, right? Ceiling function 2. Yeah. So 1 plus 1, 2, 1 plus 2, 3, right? Yeah. So you know, plus 2 version is correct. So you eliminate the ceiling function version. So you keep the floor function version. Yeah. So the next step, yeah. here we guess a reasonable one. Yeah. So this one has a good chance to be the correct formula. What's next? Next step, we need to prove it. Right? We still, we need to prove it. Because here, although we make some very reasonable guess, we have some good base. The base is here. We have very good base. Then we make some reasonable guess. But still, it is not a proof. Right? So the next question, how to write a rigorous proof to make sure this formula is 100% correct. Any idea? Yes. Mathematical induction. Yeah. The tough work, yeah. if you want to make it rigorous, you need to apply mathematical induction. to prove it, okay, yeah. So here I skip this part, all right, yeah, yeah. Usually I do this part, yeah, yeah. Here, in order to save some time, yeah, mathematical induction is important. I want to review, so that's, that's the knowledge from your discrete math. Discrete math, you have one chapter about mathematical induction. Yeah, it's pretty hard, yeah. And in this class, I want to practice only once, mathematical induction only once, yeah. but not here. So I delay. In Fibonacci number, we need to prove the Fibonacci formula. At that time, yeah, so we will do mathematical induction. Yeah. So this place, I just skip it. Okay. Otherwise, I may need about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes to do the proof. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right, yeah. So let's move to the next topic. Yeah, all right. B.2, variable size reduction. Yeah, another special type of problem size reduction approach in the problem solving general method. It's a small subcategory. So called a variable size reduction. Yeah. So let's look at uh, our question, yeah. our computing problem. Problem nine, greatest common divisor. Yeah. It looks pretty easy. So you did before. Yeah. Here, let's do it in a different way. Yeah. All right. Given the question, two non-negative integers m and n but not both zero. Yeah, yeah. So we need this condition. Not both is zero. Yeah. Otherwise, we have problem. Yeah, not both zero. Yeah. All right. 
Find their greatest common divisor, GCD, function of m and n. Yeah. So you know the meaning, greatest common divisor, right? Yeah. So here, so let us solve it. Yeah. When we solve it, we use two methods. Yeah. The first method, you all have the experience in your middle school. I believe everyone did it in your middle school. Yeah, here let us recall our middle school way to solve this problem. Now,、yeah. start from there. All right, middle school procedure. Step one: find the prime factorization of m. Yeah, here. The key step, you need to do prime factorization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that. Yeah, that's you have to do it. Yeah. Step two, find prime factorization of n. Yeah. So these two operands, for each one, you need to do prime factorization. Yeah. Step three, find all the common prime factors. Because after prime factorization, for each prime, you can look at the common prime factors contained in both numbers m and n, the largest possible common, you know, prime factor in, as a power of a prime. Okay, power of prime in that format. Yeah. All right. Step four. Compute the product of all the common prime factors. Yeah, but each prime factor, you look at the largest power of that particular prime as a common factor in both numbers. Then at the end, you multiply all those factors to get the GCD. Yeah, yeah. All right. This method relies on. Prime factorization. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Here, let me use a simple example to, you know, give you some concrete understanding. Yeah. All right. Example. Let's find GCD of sixty and twenty-four. Simple numbers. Yeah. So we can see the prime factorization easily. Yeah. First. Sixty, we can write prime factorization in this way: two squared times three times five. Yeah. 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 All right. Simple. Yeah. Second, twenty-four equals two cubed times three. Yeah. So you can see. Yeah. First one, it contains three prime numbers. Two, three, five. Second, two, three. Yeah, five. It does not appear in the second number, so we do not need to look at five. Okay, only two and three. These two primes are contained in both numbers. Yeah, but for two, we want to see the largest power of two as a factor in both numbers. That is two square, yeah. Two square, the largest power of two. Yeah. For three, only one. Yeah. So we just take three. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So three here. Yeah. We multiply these two numbers, we get twelve. So our answer, GCD of sixty comma twenty four equals twelve. That's the middle school procedure. Pretty easy here. Yeah. The question. Question. Yeah. How do you feel about this method? Yeah. Do you feel it's a good, acceptable method? Can we take this method to calculate? GCD for any given 
two positive integers m and n. Positive integer any given m and n. Can we use this way to calculate GCD of m and n? That question. That question. Yeah. Yeah. In your middle school, your teachers only let you calculate GCD for relatively small m and n, right? Never for large m and n, okay? It never be possible to calculate m 10 digit number, 8 7 digit number. Is it possible to calculate like that? No. <laughs> right, right, right. That's the question. Then you will see the problem. Okay? So the middle school procedure usually only good for relatively small integers. But here, in this class, computer science, and when we need to go to industry, when you need to calculate GCD, you need to consider very large operands, M and N. Very large operands. Then, the prime factorization based method may not be good. So the key step is the prime factorization. Yeah. So the question here is, question, how fast can one do on the prime factorization problem. Okay? Yeah. This problem. Yeah. There is another computing problem. This one relies on, yeah. but that prime factorization problem, we need to look at it how fast or how slow? Yeah. How fast? Yeah. The other side, how slow it is. Yeah. For large integers, large m and n, do prime factorization. Yeah. In number theory, we know there there are you know some algorithms, right? Yeah, some algorithms you can do prime factorization. Okay, yeah, some very famous ancient algorithm. Yeah, anyone who who still remember the name called some name of sieve sieve. Yeah, but there is a name. You know, you know that name hard to pronounce. You know, you know the word. Er, so, or, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't pronounce it. Yeah, yeah, but some, you know, see prime factorization. It's a very famous, yeah, ancient algorithm. Yeah, so that one you can apply. Yeah, but in number theory, people, people has more advanced. Yeah, could be very complicated calculate. Yeah, here let me just want to say something. Yeah, you clear. Uh, you that's different. Uh, that's not this prime. You clear. That's a, another story. We will get there. Yeah, we will get there. You you clear algorithm. That's solving this GCD. Our next method. Our method number two. You clear the algorithm, but not for that sieve. Okay, the sieve. So, earth, erratos. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't pronounce. Erratos. Yeah. When I go home, I, I can search. I try to pronounce. I need to practice. Yeah. Then I can, I can talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But the prime factorization, yeah. Let me just tell you the result. It is very slow. It is extremely slow. 
Okay? Yeah. How slow it is. Here, let me give you some old stories. Old stories about this prime factorization. Yeah. 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 But I don't want to spend too much time. Yeah. So let me see. Yeah. All right. Because I want to go to your clear this algorithm quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Less than ten minutes. Less than ten minutes. I need to finish the story. Yeah. So the, in the old story, prime factorization, yeah. People some you know uh, organization give a prize to people in the world to do prime factorization on one thousand digit Prime number, yeah, you know, one thousand digit number is that big number? One thousand digit, yeah, yeah, yeah. To do prime factorization, one thousand digit, yeah. The price is one hundred thousand dollars to do that. Okay, yeah. You you need a very fast computer, supercomputers. And uh, probably many computers connected, you know, many servers, you know, do the parallel computing to find the prime factorization in months. That time, months, that time, that long, several months, yeah. you know, that slow. Prime factor, give you an idea. The prime factorization that slow. Okay? Yeah? In the you know real world, people try that. Okay? People calculate. Yeah. You know, use a lot of computing power. You know, many people in the world connected, you know, work together, try to solve the problem, you know. In the category thousands of digits, that category, you know, to get an answer. So you can imagine using even supercomputer, you know, all computer connected in the world. Still, take it took about six months to solve it. Okay, yeah. So you can imagine how slow it is. Okay, yeah. All right. So then, now we know. Prime factorization, it's a very hard problem. Hard to solve. Hard to calculate it. Yeah. So then, think about this computation problem. It is very slow. We know this property is a bad one, right? Slow computation, it's a bad problem, right? A bad thing, yeah. Can you imagine there are some special applications that can make this slow computation probably a good thing? Something that can benefit the community, benefit us in the computing world, community. Can you imagine some special Applications, this kind of slow prime factorization can benefit us all. Encryption. Think about encryption. Okay? Yeah. So, internet era, you want to make your information encrypted in a strong way, right? Yeah, very strong. Very hard to decrypt. Yeah. So you want to, you know, yeah, because if it's hard to do the prime factorization, if you make an encryption algorithm based on prime factorization, then the hacker, hackers, they need to spend a lot of time to do the prime factorization in order to Decode, okay, decrypt it. Yeah. So there is a famous encryption algorithm is called RSA. 
algorithm. RSA algorithm. Yeah. For encryption. Yeah. So this is a famous one. Yeah. These three letters, initials from three professors in MIT. Three professors, math professors, number theory. So they use the number theory property to design this algorithm. In number theory, there is a famous theorem called the Fermat's Little Theorem. Fermat's Little Theorem. Not big theorem, little theorem. The big theorem. There is another one. Yeah, Fermat's little theorem. Okay, little one. So that theorem, you know, very beautiful. You know, some special pro property related to prime. Okay, related to prime. Okay, so then they design a method. Algorithm based on Fermat's little theorem, yeah. So you can multiply two prime. How to do encryption? You take two very large primes, yeah. Each one in thousand digits, that large, okay. Two primes, each one in thousand digits. Then you multiply those two out. That's easy, right? Use computer to do prime multiplication. That's lightning fast. But the inverse process is hard. The reverse one, if you want to decompose that large one back to two primes, takes extremely long time. Yeah. That property can be used to design this RSA algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. So they multiply two primes, big numbers together, and Send that product, yeah, because of the product you send that as a public key. Yeah. In encryption theory, there are two keys, right? A public key and a private key. Okay, public key you can send to everyone. Everyone, you know, can take the public key. Okay, but you cannot, you know, decrypt using the public key. You have to use the private key to decrypt it. Okay, private key to de decrypt it. The private key you have to protect your, your private key, all right? Yeah. So then with the pri private key, then the algorithm you put there, apply the Fermat's little theorem, you can decompose those two numbers quickly. Okay. Yeah. Pri private key. Yeah. yeah. But if the hacker they don't have the pri private key. Yeah. Hackers they do not have the private key. So they need to hack the public key to decompose it, but it's too hard. It takes too long. Okay, now if after time too long, then so your information is secure. Okay, so after very long time, you know, yeah, so the protection already good enough. Yeah, that is the, you know. Current most popular encryption algorithm, this RSA algorithm, the the current, yeah, simple, but very powerful. Okay, very hard hard to be broken. Okay, yeah, break it. Yeah, hard to break, hard to break. Yeah, but this one, this algorithm. May have, may be in danger in future, because right now many researchers they build quantum computer. Right? Have you heard of the quantum computer? Quantum, yeah. Some organization they claim they made progress. You know, IBM, Google. You know. Several giants, you know, computing giants. They claim 
their quantum computer reach a certain point, you know, yeah, yeah. But some people predict if quantum computer get ready in the mainstream, ready, then it can break this impression algorithm quickly. Yeah. That's the power of quantum computer. Yeah. So this algorithm won't be good enough anymore. Yeah. Because if people use quantum computer, they can break in a few seconds. That fast. That's the technology. Power. Okay? Yeah. Just a little background for this topic. All right? Yeah. Okay, let us move to our method number two. This time, we want to find a different method. It does not rely on prime factorization. We know prime, it's too slow. So we get around. So we try to use a very simple operations, simple, fast operations to help us find the GCD. Yeah. We don't have to use prime factorization. Yeah. So other operations very fast we can use. Yeah. All right, so let's look at this. Reduce problem size. How to solve the basic idea we reduce problem size. How to reduce problem size? Here we use a very simple mathematical tool. We need to use a tool. It's a simple but very powerful. So what's the tool? In grade school, you know, you did that in grade school. Okay, even not in middle school. Yeah, in you know primary school, you learn that simple math tool, but so powerful here. Okay, what's that? Division algorithm. Doing integer division, you can do it in primary school, right? Yeah, division algorithm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so simple. Uh, so what's that? Given positive integers a and b, b not equal to zero. Yeah. Then we can do integer division. There exists unique integers q and r. Q for quotient. R for remainder, such that, yeah, but the remainder R must be in the range between zero and B, zero inclusive, but a B exclusive. Okay, not equal to B. It cannot remainder cannot be the same as the divisor. B is the divisor. Yeah. All right. So we can write this formula. A equals B times the quotient Q plus the remainder R. So simple, right? Yeah. That's the, you know, integer division, but you need to keep the remainder. Yeah. 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 That's called division algorithm. It's a simple, basic algorithm in number theory. Yeah. In number theory, this theorem is very important. So simple, but so fundamental. So many advanced results are derived from this simple theorem. Okay, yeah. Here, we need to use that. All right, All right. yeah. Here, we make m, yeah, so we assume, so if m is a larger number, so we want to use m to divide the divisor n. n is the divisor. Yeah. And then we have quotient and we have the remainder r. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here, let's assume m greater or equal to m. Yeah. Otherwise, if it's not, then swap those two numbers. Well, so that's simple. All right, what do we have now? We have this formula. Yeah. So let's start from this division formula, integer division formula with remainder, okay? 
integer division with remainder formula. Okay, all right. Then let's look at a key property on the GCD, greatest common divisor reduction. Problem size reduction. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so now let us do transformation. Yeah. All right. Transform this formula, GCD of n and n. Yeah. First, let us replace m by the expression nq plus r, comma, n. Okay, all right. Then, here you can see there is a term that is n multiple, yeah. Our divisor is n, but the number to be used for the division, there is a n multiple part, okay? Yeah, all right. So then if you look at the fraction, we know division so that has the same equivalence when we look at the fraction form, right? We can write division in this fraction form, okay? m over n, meaning m divided n. Now we want to do, you know, yeah, when we take m as n cubed plus r, after, after we do the division separately, right? We have two terms. So division separately. The first term, it becomes integer Q. Okay? Integer Q. Nothing to do with fraction. Integer part. But second part, R over N. Okay? Now, if you look at this new expression, you can see when we talk of divisors between M and N, divisors between M and N, are, they, are those divisors the same as those between R and N? Because the integer part has nothing to do with divisors, right? Integer part won't change anything on the divisors, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that means you can ignore the integer part. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So let me rephrase the observation, the property, the key property here. The key property is the common divisors between M and N should also appear as common divisors between R and N. But R smaller, right? Yeah, the remainder smaller than before. So you reduce the problem size from M to R. How about that? M to R. Reduction. The problem size reduction. Yeah. So that's the you know insight. Insight here. Yeah. All right. So then we can write the GCD of MN equals GCD of N comma R. But the problem size is reduced. Yeah. Here, the problem size, yeah, in order to represent problem size, we can use the, the maximum of M and N for the problem size. Problem size. Okay, so this one, problem size, maximum of N and R, definitely, in general, you can see the size becomes smaller, right? Yeah. After one round operation, you can treat as a modular operation, right? Modular. Because we throw away the quotient. Yeah. We don't need the quotient. Yeah. But we need to keep the remainder. That's the modular operation, okay? Yeah. yeah. You take the modular operation, yeah. And the way the modular operation is very fast, okay? It's different from prime factorization. 
extremely fast modular operation. Integer modular operation, pretty fast. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, so this is our key size reduction formula. With that, then we can write recursive algorithm based on this recurrence relation. That's the Euclidean algorithm. That's the famous Euclidean algorithm more than 2,000 years old. More than 2,000 years old. Euclidean time. Euclidean, the famous geometry book. You know, yeah. All right, yeah, all right. So then, let's move to the next slide, the implementation of Euclidean algorithm. No. No. Very famous in number theory. Yeah, so another fundamental algorithm in number theory, Euclid's algorithm. The rule, yeah, here, yeah. let's write a, The rule is very simple. All right, yeah. GCD of x and y, two integers. All right, yeah. Here, x and y cannot be both zeros. If x, y, both zero, they are not defined, okay? Yeah, because people may ask, so here, let me just let zero and zero is not defined. Okay, yeah. You cannot define any number as GCD of zero and zero, okay? No specific number can be used here. Okay? Yeah. So that's the problem. Yeah. So no definition. Yeah. All right. So you do not allow it. Okay? All right. Yeah. Then, if y equals 0, GCD of x and y, but x cannot be 0. Yeah. Make sure x not equal to 0, that GCD of x and 0 is x. Yeah, not 0, yeah, is x. Okay? Yeah. So that's the simple case. Yeah. Then, if y is not equal to 0, yeah. so then, but if x mod y equals 0, that means x is a multiple of y. x it's a multiple of y, okay? Yeah. Remainder is zero. If x is multiple of y, then GCD of x and y is y. So these two simple cases, all right, we treat as the base cases of the recursive relation. After that, our main recurrence relation part, GCD of, the one we derived from the previous slide, that size reduction formula, GCD of y comma x mod y. X mod y, remainder. Yeah. Okay. So you reduce the problem size, then this one, you do further recursions. At the end, the base case is Two of the base cases would give you the final answer. Yeah. But the, these modular operations, so simple and fast. Yeah. Here, when you take two 1,000 digit integers x and y, use this way very fast. So you do the reduction, okay? Yeah. Keep doing reductions many, many times, you know, pretty, you know, very, very fast. At the end, you can get your GCD quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So this Euclid's algorithm, much faster than prime factorization-based algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. Any any question here? Yeah. Here. Try to, you know, what we can learn. Try to think about 
what we can learn from this example. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How to solve your problem in a very fast way? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's the end of the slide already. Yeah. So, yeah. I still, I have, yeah, five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. In the, in the next, next one. Yeah. Probably we can only do one, one, one slide. Yeah, let's do one slide. Yeah. Yeah, I mean today we spent you know too much time on the older material. All right. Part C, Fibonacci numbers. Yeah. Yeah. This topic, yeah, Fibonacci numbers, some very interesting numbers, yeah, but through this topic we can learn some other basic important properties in recursion. Yeah. C.1, introduction to Fibonacci numbers. Yeah. All right. Our problem, computing problem number 10, calculate Fibonacci numbers. Yeah. There is a simple recursion formula, very simple. Yeah. yeah. Initial values in the Fibonacci sequence, F0 equals 0, F1 equals 1, but after that, a simple recursion, F sub n equals Fn minus 1 plus Fn minus 2, for n greater or equal to 2. So that's the definition of Fibonacci numbers. Yeah. Then, we need to find Fibonacci numbers f sub n, given any number n, how to find f sub n. Yeah. Sometimes people write as function f of n, okay? Yeah, n as the parameter. Yeah. It's also okay. Yeah. So math way, math people may like to write this way, subscripts. Computer science people, they may like to use the function way. Yeah. Fibonacci function f of n function. Yeah. All right, here just the, you know, first a few early uh, Fibonacci numbers. Yeah. Here is, you know, how to find some, you know, other than this recursion how to see some other special rules in these numbers. Yeah. All right. Okay, yeah. Here, our plan, yeah. yeah. So this com computing question is pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah, not very hard. Yeah. Yeah. But this simple example, we can learn uh, several interesting topics useful, interesting topics, and understand some concepts. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So our plan to work on this problem, the first one, solve it algorithmically. We need to write a computer algorithm to find a solution. Yeah. So that's the first step of our plan. Second, yeah, all right, uh, write a computer program to implement some algorithm. Second, solve it mathematically. We try to find a math formula for Fibonacci numbers, if it's possible, yeah. So there is a, such formula. So we want to know how to find that formula. Yeah. So that's step two, derive a math formula. Yeah. So for the algorithm, you can see it's very easy to write a recursive function in this way. Yeah. 
That's a simple, straightforward recursive function. Pseudocode, right? Yeah, pseudocode. FIBO of integer parameter n. Yeah. First, you check two base cases, zero case, n equals one case. Other than the zero, one base cases, you just return recursive function call result. Okay. So simple implementation. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see any problem? Yeah. First, we know the result must be correct. Yeah. So if you write recursive function in this way, the result must be correct. Okay? Yeah. But the problem, the problem is yeah. if you write a computer program in this way, you can think about, can you imagine some possible consequence if you write a program in this way? Yes. How do you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Very slow. Exponentially slow. How slow it is? Exponentially slow. Okay? That's not, not acceptable. Yeah. 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 All right. So last a few sentences before we finish in one minute. Okay? Yeah. Conclusion. Yeah. The conclusion. All right? Yeah. So in our computer science, yeah, to solve a computing problem, if your algorithm has the exponential growth function, you know growth function, right? If your growth function is in the category of exponential functions, then your algorithm is useless, okay? That algorithm is useless. Yeah. You know, no practical usage for your algorithm, okay? Forget about it. So that bad, that bad, okay? Yeah, all right, so let's continue this topic next time.